Well, as well as acting and directing, my final guest this week has set up a charity, Spirit Aids, to improve the lives of children around the world. He's David Heyman. Uh, and before we talk about that, let's have a look uh, at possibly his most famous role at the moment, Chief Superintendent Michael Walker in the latest series of ITV's Trial and Retribution. Hello, Mark. It's Mike. If you didn't have the right shoes. Oh, but I saved up. I did extra creeling work. Oh, but they were silver, strappy. Just a little heel. Never danced with me. Had to be a secret. Or it'd get nasty. Would you dance with me? Well, David Heyman in character there, he's a miserable bloke there. So. <laughs> yeah, but that was his softest, the softest side of his nature coming out, Adam. <laughs> yeah, he does have a soft side, but I'm glad to see you smiling. Underneath that harsh exterior beats a heart of pure marshmallow, yes. Now, now tell us about, about Spirit Aid, because you, you founded this, this charity. Or, or, or... Yes, I did in 2001. I just realised, well, I didn't realise, but I'd been aware for some time that the, hell, the world is going to hell in a banana skin. And we seem to be blowing each other up at the drop of a hat, the gulf between rich and poor is getting greater, the exploitation, never mind what we're doing to the planet. And I thought, well, we've got to do something. It's incumbent on all of us. So I thought, well, that's what I will do. Uh, it was very difficult in the beginning. But six years down the line, I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased with the success that we've achieved. We work in Afghanistan, in Sri Lanka, Southern Africa. We've set up an orphanage in Baghdad, and we do work at home in Scotland. I mean, you do, as you say, doing various different things, but it, it's all focused on children and... Children and young people are our focus. They definitely are, because they are the future. And children tend to be the innocent victims of this world. Uh, they haven't created the world that we live in. So it's... Yes, we're dedicated to them. So this is both fundraising and going on and running projects or being involved in projects? Yes. We're very much hands-on. I love to spend the money myself. Uh, so we don't hand money over to anyone else. It means, it means we can keep control. It means I can go in under the radar when I work in places such as Afghanistan, which is much easier. So we're not a large, lumbering organisation. I like to think we reach the parts that other aid organisations don't. Which is, uh, I mean, inevitably smaller projects, smaller-scale projects. Yes, we tend to uh, be in partnership with communities. Uh, in Afghanistan, I run two mobile clinics which cover a part of the Hindu Kush where they haven't seen a doctor in 24 years. We also cover the refugee camps in Baglan province. We've got a small school for 17 mm -hmm. kids. Uh, we've taken computers into the schools, trying to take technology. Mm -hmm. I've taken uh, aid convoys full of clothing and of medicine and of food into uh, hard-hit areas. It's, 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 a really, it's, a, it's a great leveller. It's a mm -hmm. great leveller. And, and how often do you get to, get to visit your project? I've been there five times in six years. And how, how do you find the situation there? Do you find it improving? It's getting worse. It's getting scarier. Uh, I was there last year and I could really detect the difference in tension when you hit Kabul. Uh, just a nervousness and a real edge in the air. Uh, you have to be very careful. You've got to be very, very careful. Um, we've heard of, of schools uh, in particular where girls are being taught, are being attacked or burnt down or whatever. Have, have your, uh, they they haven't so there? far. Uh, but I know that the, well, the Taliban are very against the girls, girls being uh, educated. We have two girls in our small school, 17 young people. We have 15 boys and two girls. So far, we are, they've been fairly safe. But we do keep a very low profile. We don't run around in wagons saying aid vehicles or anything else. We don't have signs over our schools. Mm. It, so it looks to the outside world that it's coming from the Afghans themselves, which I think is very, very important. And how, how do you, as, as, as a Scottish actor, I mean, how, how do you gain, if you like, the expertise, the knowledge to be, be working with the locals? There. I don't. I guess I've just learnt on the hoof. My first trip was to Kosovo, where I, I guess I learned how not to do it. Afghanistan was my next trip. And I just realised that if you're in partnership with people, it's, it's easier and it's better and it's far, far more effective and it's less patronising. Yeah. Uh, I have a great project leader, Dr. D. Mohammed, uh, whom we have some footage of, I believe, mm. as you'd see uh, mm. there who's a wonderful leader, and he's one of the top uh, doctors in Afghanistan. And do you find that you, you come under pressure both from, if you like, the, the, the British government and the Afghan government to go in certain directions? They don't really know I'm there, Adam, so don't tell them, for God's sake. <laughs> keep it quiet. Keep well, let's hope they're not watching. Well, actually, <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, now, what about the orphanage in, in, in Baghdad? I mean, they... um, we helped. I was approached by uh, uh, an Iraqi who was married to a Scotswoman. 
And they got in touch with me and said, look, he has, he has been bequeathed the house, middle class house in Baghdad. Would we help him turn it into an orphanage? Which we did. We raised the funds, we put in the generator, made it safe and sound and watertight, put in all the equipment the kids needed for their health and their safety and their education, uh, put in a house mother, and off it went. Unfortunately, last year, uh, uh, six months into the running of the orphanage, there was a suicide bombing just outside, which killed, uh, killed one of the kids, injured another, and damaged part of the house. But that's part of life in Baghdad. It's, and, it's I mean, what, sad what to say. sort of fate do uh, orphans in, in, in Baghdad face now? I mean, they would probably stay in institutions for most, most yes, of the... they're very, very lucky to find an institution, Adam. I mean, as you know, the, uh, the infrastructure of that country is in pieces, uh, so there are very few orphanages around. I, I have to say this, you know, is fascinating and obviously very important work. It, it seems a long way from a stage career in Glasgow and, and, and a very successful television career. I mean, what was there one moment which, which just inspired you? And you I, have, I, I have three sons, and I read a few years ago a wonderful Sioux Nation proverb which says, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Now, if you think about that, that's a very, very profound statement to make. And it, it's like being put through a tumble dry and you come out, and the world is different, your values are changed. You cannot look at the world in the same way again once you take the import of that statement in. So I thought to myself, well, what kind of world is, what state is the world going to be when I hand it back to my children or your children or the children of the earth? It's going to be in a pretty messy state, isn't it? Uh, and I think it's incumbent on all of us to do whatever we can. Maybe I can do a little bit more because I have a certain public profile, being an actor and being a TV star. Mm. But I think everyone can do something at some level to make the world a better place. And, and I mean, what, what's your turnover now at, at, at Spirit A? Up until last year, it was about 100 grand. So we created miracles out of 100 grand. By the end of this year, it will be a quarter of a million pounds, which is fantastic. I'm really, really excited.